Good morning all, Kalimera Zas. Uh, we're delighted to be welcoming you to the International Business Conference Business Orientation Cyprus 2021. My name is Elina Svongali, I'm a solicitor at Spectre Constant and Williams, the associate sponsors of this event, and I'll be addressing you later this morning on the services of our firm and my team. I will also be one of your presenters for today, alongside Andrea Joachim, counsel at uh, Kinanis LLC. Many of you have traveled long and far to be here with us today, and we're most grateful that you will join us in what will be an insightful and sociable day. Some housekeeping for the day, um, there'll be a combination of speeches and panels with coffee breaks in between. We aim to break for lunch at around 2 p.m. and there will be networking thereafter. Um, if the fire alarm goes off, it's not a drill and we have to get out. Now, with no further ado, let's please give a very warm welcome to the founder and president of the uh, association, without whom this would not have been possible, Mr. Savas Kiriakidis. Good morning, everybody. Kalimarasas. Welcome here to the Business uh, Orientation Cyprus 2021. I would like to welcome uh, the Minister of Interior, Mr. Nikos Nouris, the High Commissioner of the Republic of Cyprus in the UK, Mr. Andreas Kaguris, and all of you who decided to spend the day with us. I hope everybody is going to be happy at the end of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, we had uh, a long period of uh, uh, lockdown and uh, we managed today to be here all together to carry on because when, the, uh, get, uh, when it's getting tough, the tough get going. Uh, I would like to thank the associate sponsors, Spector, Constant and Williams, our gold sponsors, the silver sponsors, and of course all of you. And uh, I'm sure you will be happy at the end of the day because we have with us a lot of distinguished speakers and panelists. Many of them travel all the way from Cyprus to be here with us. They spend their time and their budgets. And uh, all of you who are here in London or in the UK, and uh, you want to find out ab about Cyprus uh, and about London as well, because we are not promoting only Cyprus, we are promoting London as a global financial center, and Cyprus as a place to invest, to relocate, or even to live where, for the people they want to move uh, and stay there. Uh, it is a great honor of, uh, for us to have here with us the uh, Minister of uh, Interior of the Republic of Cyprus. And the, his presence here shows the uh, will and the resilience of the Cyprus government to support all the efforts we are doing here in the UK to promote Cyprus in these hard uh, times. I'm not going to stay with you long because we have a, a, a long agenda. And uh, thank you once again for being here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome on the stand Mr. Andreas Kagouris, High Commissioner of the Republic of Cyprus in London, for the welcoming speech. Mr. Kagouris. Good morning. Minister Nouris, Mr. Kiriagidis, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be with you this morning to offer a few introductory remarks at this year's Business Orientation Cyprus event, which is organized for the fourth year in London. I'd like to thank the organizers, the Great Britain Cyprus Business Association, and its founder and president, Mr. Kiriagidis, for kindly inviting me to be with you this morning. It's also wonderful to at last be seeing people in person after a very challenging time for all of us. Allow me first to welcome His Excellency, the Minister of Interior, Mr. Nikos Nouris, and I believe the Minister's attendance is a reaffirmation of the commitment of the Cyprus Government to the continuous strengthening and broadening of UK-Cyprus economic and business relations. I wish to also recognise the distinguished panellists from Cyprus and the UK who have joined us today to give their perspective and insights from their respective fields. We have all witnessed, and I would say are still witnessing, the global tsunami 
brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic and the Herculean efforts of the international community to establish a vaccination program which will lead to the recovery of the global economy and return to some semblance of normality in all walks of life that the pandemic has severely dislocated. At the same time, Brexit has unavoidably affected most of those sectors that rely on cross-border trade with the EU, with increasing customs and other administrative burdens which impact movement of goods. In this challenging environment, it is important to recall the close and multifaceted relationship between Cyprus and the UK. A relationship that has long-standing political and economic ties developed over decades, both bilaterally and through our membership to the European Union and the Commonwealth. The UK remains the most important export destination for Cypriot products and one of the most significant economic partners of our country with a sizeable footprint in various business sectors. Moreover, the UK ranks first in tourist arrivals to Cyprus, representing a third of the overall number. Post-Brexit, I am confident that no matter the challenges that may arise, the robust relationship between Cyprus and the UK will continue to strengthen going forward. I am confident that today's event will serve as an excellent opportunity to explore ways of cooperation and synergies, including identifying the latest trends and business developments, and our speakers will showcase and reaffirm Cyprus both as a reliable and a viable partner in a post-Brexit environment. I believe Cyprus will continue to further advance its position as a significant international hub and investment destination. In this endeavour, our diplomatic mission in London remains at everyone's disposal to facilitate the establishment of both new cooperation and propel the further development of existing business links and assist with any consular or other matters. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not thank again the organisers, the Great Britain Cyprus Business Association and the contributors in making this event possible, which I am sure will open vistas to new and mutually beneficial cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gaguris. It is now with great honour that we are welcoming the Minister of the Interior of Cyprus, Mr. Nikos Nouris, for his own speech. Good morning, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is uh, an honor for me to welcome you all for today's session on Cyprus, which is organized by the Great Britain Cyprus Business Association. And I would like to extend my gratitude to the organizers for inviting me uh, as a speaker. And I thank you for your warm welcome and the too many photos I have taken. Uh, over the next uh, few minutes, I would like to give you a, a brief overview and showcase why our country, Cyprus, is the ideal uh, European destination to establish and grow a business. Dear friends, uh, the government of Cyprus has a very clear vision on how to develop business in our country. It is our intention to establish Cyprus as a prosperous, reliable, and of course, competitive destination, keen on providing the conditions under which an investor can thrive. Recently, the President of the Republic, along with uh, four relevant ministers, we have presented our strategy which takes into account best European practices and the aspiration to turn Cyprus into a sustainable European business and trade center in our broader region in the Eastern Mediterranean. Our strategy, complies with the guidelines of the European Commission and the targets of the Recovery and Resilience Fund. Ladies and gentlemen, Cyprus can offer comparative advantages. I'm talking to an audience that I'm sure that you are all aware of Cyprus, of course. But let me highlight a few. We are a small island located at the crossroad of, uh, uh, crossroads, excuse me, of uh, Europe, Africa and Asia in the far, far east corner of the Mediterranean Sea. Cyprus is increasingly gaining momentum as a prime contender in the minds of international investors and decision makers. As you are all aware, we have joined the European Union in, back in 2004 and we became a member of the Eurozone in 2008. The geostrategic location of Cyprus can be used as a gateway to connect European Union 
to high growth markets in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, North Africa, Asia and beyond. In addition, Cyprus offers full access to the European single market of half a billion consumers, while the country has 40 trade agreements in place and a double taxation treaty network with 65 countries. So why Cyprus? Because Cyprus, dear friends, is a modern, cosmopolitan, and transparent business center offering opportunities for investment across a wide range of sectors, such as technology, shipping, innovation, rich research and development, and of course, much more. Capitalizing on its competitive advantages, we continuously improving the business sector, increasing competitiveness and ensuring a stable and robust economic environment, which is business friendly, with a highly skilled multilingual workforce, where doing business is simple, fast and efficient. And I can assure you that we are doing our best to improve um, especially all these uh, issues. At the same time, life is of the highest quality. We have sun. Shaping an ideal business environment to invest, uh, prosper and grow. According to the main economic indicators, Cyprus economic recovery GDP average growth rate is expected for this year, 2021, to exceed 5.4% according to European Commission's latest uh, projections. With the unemployment rate for September 2021 at 3.6%, Cyprus is positioned well below the EU and the Eurozone average. Overall, Cyprus is demonstrating a stable economic outlook by the international credit rating agencies. One of the most aspect for foreign companies is our attractive and business-friendly tax system, the benefits, of, the benefits of which I am sure will be heard and analyzed extensively at the second panel, so I will skip that. But another key advantage is the excellent regulatory framework, which is closely aligned to the English common law system and fully compliant with EU and international laws and regulations. The system offers transparency and reliability in business practices, while it is frequently updated to, to meet the changing needs of investors. The legislation offers a strong protection for investment and intellectual property, whereas setting up a company is simple and fast. And you'll hear more uh, later on about this. Over the last decades, Cyprus has established itself as a reputable business hub due to its strong and reliable network of financial and professional services. In fact, Cyprus' service-based economy makes up 80% of the total business activities. The figure shown on the slide clearly proves that. I won't go through the numbers, they are quite obvious. According to Eurostat's data, Cyprus, when compared to other EU jurisdictions, offers very competitive solutions in doing business at low cost in terms of the labor market, property prices, business services, as well as the overall cost of living. More specifically, in terms of the labor cost, both salaries and non-wage labor are much lower than in many other EU countries. When looking at property prices, such as rental, either for office space or residential use, Cyprus is much more competitive while business services are of high quality standards, but at the same time offered at very reasonable rates. In terms of the overall cost of living, Cyprus is very affordable compared to many other Western EU jurisdictions. Our country is a country with uh, a well-educated, high-skilled, multilingual workforce with international business experience that is ranked well above average among EU countries in tertiary education attainment. It is also regarded as an attractive relocation destination and therefore can, can offer companies, like uh, the ones that you uh, represent, easy access to global and European talent. In terms of quality of life, allow me to say, no doubt. 
Cyprus is an appealing relocation destination to expats and their families. A beautiful country with rich culture and history, lots of natural beauty and unique uh, landscapes, plenty of sunshine and a delicious Mediterranean cuisine. In addition, Cyprus ranks uh, top in various international reports in terms of lifestyle and human capital and is considered one of the safest countries in the world. And this is extremely important nowadays. Many professionals choose to live and work in Cyprus due to its high quality of life and the fantastic work-life balance. Now, this chart provides a quick overview of the cost of living index and how Cyprus compared to other EU member states such as Luxembourg, Ireland, Netherlands and Malta. Looking at this comparative graph retrieved from the uh, CEO World Magazine 2020, one may know that Cyprus is a more cost competitive jurisdiction overall. The uh, economy of Cyprus. The economy of Cyprus is diversified and consists of several key growth sectors hospitality and tourism, shipping and real estate, which are the more traditional sectors, have been the growth drivers of the economy for decades. Energy, higher education, investment funds and ICT, research and innovation are now three leading sectors which are equally important as they promote sustainable growth and development. Last, but certainly not least, the professional service sector has played a vital role and has been the backbone of transforming Cyprus into a reputable business and investment center. As mentioned before, the government of Cyprus has recently announced a new strategy for attracting businesses and investment, introducing additional key incentives for foreign companies, including the transformation of the existing fast-track business activation mechanism into a business facilitation, facilitation unit. In addition to the very attractive tax incentives, the new strategy offers easy relocation of employees from non-EU countries, the so-called third countries. The newly announced business facilitation unit will provide services for the establishment of corporate entities, such as companies' registration and name approval, registration and with social insurance, VAT, income tax, and employers' registries. Regarding employment of third country nationals in Cyprus, new companies not already registered with the Civil Registry and Migration Department will now firstly register at the Business Facilitation Unit at the Ministry of Energy, Commerce and Industry, which is going to be the point of entry. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, for a number of years, the government of Cyprus did offer a citizenship by investment program, which you are all aware of, which was known as the Cyprus Investment Program, the CIP. The Cyprus Investment Program was irrevocably terminated by the Council of Ministers on the 1st November of 2020, and all pending applications of the CIP were processed by July 2021. Moreover, the Cypriot government taking into consideration all European Union guidelines and in respect for the concerns expressed by the EU authorities and several member states, I can say, has no intention in introducing a similar citizenship by investment program that does not include a prerequisite of actual residence in the country. It needs to be noted that any policies that my government implements or might introduce in the future aiming in attracting foreign investment have uh, as an ultimate goal sustainability and long-term growth. Our efforts to improve the economic and business environment <coughs> is systematic and continues. Last year the Council of Ministers decided to facilitate, among others, the transfer of specialists to foreign companies operating in Cyprus through a fast-track activation mechanism. Today, we move forward by modernizing our policies even more. We focus on facilitating existing companies and to attract more foreign companies wishing to operate in Cyprus. We believe 
that such a development will be a catalyst for the creation of growth dynamics and conditions to strengthen even more our economic prosperity. The new incentive package, in addition to favorable tax incentives, includes, among others of course, a revised immigration policy for international business, family reunification and employment of family members upon guidelines, reduced naturalization period for non-EU nationals based on certain criteria, and I would like to underline that, that will be submitted to the House of Representatives early next year. Social insurance agreements with non-EU countries and the newly inter introduced digital nomad visa with, for third country nationals who work remotely from Cyprus. Dear friends, over the decades, Cyprus has become a thriving international business and investment center and is home to many international companies, mainly from shipping and tech uh, sectors, such as Columbia, Interorient, MSC, NCR, Wargaming, eToro, uh, just to mention a few, which are using the island as a business hub, while servicing clients in Europe, the Middle East, North Africa, and beyond. Now, the Cyprus government has adopted a holistic approach in further promoting the digital agenda, as well as research, research and innovation by utilizing access to EU funding through several centers of scientific excellence, incubators and accelerators, which have, have, which have strong collaboration with re-owned re uh, international partners. The European Innovation Scoreboard provides a comparative analysis of innovation performance in the EU and neighboring countries, whereby Cyprus has witnessed, as you can see, an improvement in its performance of more than 25 percent points and has scored among the top five country performers. This is further proof that Cyprus is constantly strengthening its national uh, innovation system. The importance attributed by the Cyprus government to the development of key economic sectors is also reflected on the booming higher education sector with a growing number of public and private universities that offer accredited bachelors, masters and PhD degrees in computer science, engineering and other relevant programs that are in a great demand globally. And Cyprus has recently 10 accredited universities, whereby most of them are in close cooperation with reputable British universities through various forms on trans, trans, transnational education agreements. Cyprus offers excellent potential for British universities to set up campus operation on the island in all uh, disciplines. Now, I would like to highlight as well that to better serve the citizen, the government proceeded to simplify the licensing procedure through the new development licensing policy. This is under the Ministry of Interior. This reform intervention of urban planning and building permitting came into force in October 2020, introducing through the possibility of electronic submission of applications a faster, more effective, and more transparent procedure for granting housing planning and building permits. The fast track process allows for the issuing of planning permits within 10 days for online uh, applications and within 20 days for applications submitted in writing. Since October 1st, 2020, it's almost uh, a year now, and a year and uh, 13 months actually, the planning authorities issued 2,522 permits with the fast track process, and the Ministry of Interior intends to extend the scope of the fast track planning permits by June 1st of 2022, uh, in six months' time in the next year, to include larger and more complex developments in order to facilitate and accelerate the investments. The third and final step towards the new licensing policy is the investment facilitation law which covers the so-called large investments 
of more than 25 million euro. It aims to facilitate and simplify the licensing procedure of these strategic developments by, by helping to attract investors either from Cyprus or from abroad. The government is committed to create modernized, simplified, more effective and fast procedures to serve the investors so that our country becomes a truly attractive investment destination for sustainable and long-term developments. Within this context, in addition to the incentives and licensing procedures, which undoubtedly act as a catalyst in promoting land development, the intention of the government's policy is the even more drastic and rational intervention through the forthcoming revision of the four local plans in the major urban areas of the country. Through this process, we will attempt the transition to a new, modernized form of local plans, aiming at the introduction of innovative and dynamic urban planning tools and mechanisms that will allow the promotion of sustainable and development based on the principles of protection of the natural and built environment. The concept of resilience and adaptability will enable urban and special planning to be reorganized in a dynamic way. In closing, dear friends, I would like to share the results of a survey that was conducted by EY in 2020, which explores the attractiveness of Cyprus in different criteria amongst existing foreign investors. The interesting outcome is that 99% of all survey participants expressed that the quality of life is one of the most attractive factors for operating a business in Cyprus. Moreover, it was noted that the telecommunications and digital infrastructure, as well as the stable political and social environment, are all considered as important criteria. In terms of the tech ecosystem, more than 80% of established foreign investors value the existing entrepreneurial and startup culture as well as uh, the local it makes it more uh, uh, simple and more uh, efficient, uh, abolishing a number of uh, number of uh, requirements like um, like under the existing policy, let's say if there are different types of uh, staff uh, categories and different uh, salary levels. Um, so this is, uh, the, the new policy makes it more simplified. And uh, it also, of course, we are, we are waiting to see a more detailed um, version of the new policy. Um, it also seems like it abolishes the requirement to to invest uh, 200,000 euro in the company. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more friendly and more straightforward, and it would make uh, life easier for the, the company. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, we can uh, now move on to a discussion with Esme Pallas on the rights of UK nationals in Cyprus in the post-Brexit uh, era in relation to relocation and retirement. Hello, Esme. Hello. So, uh, Brexit is now a, a reality. Can you tell us a bit more how this has affected the rights of uh, UK nationals already living in Cyprus? Um, UK nationals already living in Cyprus uh, basically have no cause for concern. Uh, they can continue to, to live in Cyprus and enjoy the same benefits of education, health care and employment um, as previously. And in fact, we'll see very little changing in their everyday life, um, especially since um, they, um, they have been living there for so long. And uh, this is provided, of course, they have obtained the necessary documentation. Okay. 
erased in CA documents. So basically nothing changes for them. <laughs> yes. and the UK nationals need to update their paperwork if they already hold residency documents uh, prior to Brexit? Um, the Cyprus government has chosen not to make it obligatory for those who have been living in Cyprus uh, post -bre prior to Brexit mm -hmm. um, to update the residency documentation. For sure it is beneficial for them to do so, but not obligatory. And what about UK nationals who have been living in Cyprus prior to Brexit but have not had the chance to get their actual re uh, residence documentation prior to the end of 2020? Uh, luckily they don't have to panic, uh, and provided they can, they can show um, solid documentary evidence of the, of the fact that they lived in Cyprus prior to Brexit, um, they can apply for the new residency documents um, that now in, in force. Um, as long as, as I said, they have uh, documentary evidence of their prior um, residence in Cyprus. So this would be the rental agreements uh, and um, utility bills, utility bills. Um, uh, bank statements showing uh, proof of payments for everything. Proof of living. Proof of living, proof of living basically. basically. Yes, that's the important part. Okay, so that's very good news for those who have already been living in Cyprus Absolutely. prior to Brexit. Uh, what about UK nationals who wish to come to Cyprus for holidays or they have a holiday home on the island and wish to visit? Is that at all possible and how? Yes, and absolutely. Um, they can still visit Cyprus. There's no need for an actual visa. They can remain on the island for uh, 90 days out of any 180 day period. Mm -hmm. um, what about if they want to remain for more than 90 days, uh, for example, are there any other options available? Yes, for those who wish to stay in Cyprus for more than uh, 90 days, um, they can apply for what, what is uh, commonly called the pink slip, which is actually a temporary residency um, visa. They need, they can, uh, it, it can be valid for one year, renewable at the end of the year. They, they don't need to uh, buy any property in Cyprus, they can show a rental agreement they need to prove that they have a secure annual income coming from abroad um, during their stay, the one year there. And um, they can bring their spouse and their children below the age of 18 who can join the application. Mm -hmm. And uh, are there any other routes available for those seeking a more permanent, uh, uh, permanent uh, residence in Cyprus and considering relocation and retirement? Um, yes, they are. Uh, my esteemed colleague Natalie has already covered um, the, uh, what is commonly known as the fast track residency uh, permit under regulation uh, 6.2. It is important to remember there that there has to be a minimum investment of 300,000 in one of the uh, categories that Natalie um, uh, elaborated on. So whether it's uh, um, um, housing, accommodation, uh, commercial real estate, investment in a Cyprus company, or even um, in, in funds. Okay, it's also important to note that there is a minimum annual income of 30,000 in that category, and that it can be, it can be passed on to the spouse, mm -hmm. children up to the age of 25, uh, provided they are in, high, in education, and it even applies to the in-laws or the parents-in-law of the main applicant. Okay, now obviously a lot of those coming to Cyprus do not have 300,000 to invest. Um, a lot of our clientele are people who wish to retire in Cyprus, um, who basically have some savings but not to yeah. that amount. Okay, um, for that category, for that category of people, uh, the most appropriate um, category uh, application in which they could apply is category F. Okay. Um, now, under uh, F, uh, category F, they do not need to invest any specific amount. They do not even have to purchase property in uh, Cyprus, although it is it, it must be said that owning a property in Cyprus weighs heavily in any application. The application is done on a is examined on um, um, a case by case basis on its merits. Um, they they do not need to have um, a, a certain amount of income. 
it is important for them to have uh, to be able to show um, that they have readily at their disposal a secure annual income high enough to, um, uh, to yes to support their living in Cyprus so um, even a pension for example would be uh, sufficient now who can apply um, the main applicant their spouse and it's important to note only children up to the age of 18 once they reach 18 they would then have to apply in their own uh, in their own right yes and um, it is valid for life, provided, of course, they uh, definitely visit the island uh, every two years, if not already living there. Uh, no language uh, requirements. Um, we usually talk about people who want to retire in Cyprus, but uh, what about those who want to relocate to Cyprus uh, and work here? Uh, how is that possible uh, in the yeah. post exit, post exit um, here? I would say I think that the, har the harshest, felt if harshest felt effect of Brexit, negatively felt effect, is for those who wish to come to the island and work. Um, we are asked about this on a daily basis again, as a lot of our clientele um, would like to come and work in Cyprus. And the answer is that it's not as easy as it was before. Uh, Post-Brexit, they would have to either work for a Cyprus company and uh, the Cyprus company would have to obtain a, a, a work permit for them. Now, to do so, they have to prove to the Labour Office that there is no European or Cypriot uh, person who can actually do the job. So, okay, it is possible, but not that easy. Now, um, through what uh, has already been um, spoken about uh, by my esteemed colleague George, um, the, um, uh, the possibility of the companies of foreign interest uh, to employ third, third country personnel, uh, which would include uh, UK nationals. Um, uh, a new gateway is opening up, okay, so we have the possibility of those who have um, an available amount of 200,000 uh, euros to invest uh, in a company and set up a company of foreign interest. They are able to come to the island, they can set up a business and actually um, I think uh, relocating uh, companies in Cyprus is actually a very attractive uh, post-Brexit uh, solution uh, because they, the companies can keep their um, uh, keep their, their the foothold in, in Europe through a, a Cyprus company. Uh, these companies of foreign interest can, as we heard before, employ non-EU uh, personnel. And in fact, um, the, the government's policy has been for a while now to attract these companies to the island um, and through what used to be the fast track business activation mechanism, now uh, transformed into the business facilitation unit as of the 1st of January to facilitate these companies to set up, to register, as the uh, Steam Minister has previously uh, mentioned, to register with all the authorities. So, whether that is the um, uh, set up the company and then uh, registered with VAT, with social insurance, and most uh, importantly in this case, to um, assist these companies obtain work permits in a very swift and efficient mode for their uh, personnel. Mm -hmm. So basically it's either working for a Cyprus company or setting up a, a company of foreign interest or working for a company of foreign interest that are the Working office. for a secret company or secret employers as long as they can prove that there was no secret that could yes. build the actual yes. work. Correct. Okay. And what about UK nationals who want to work remotely uh, for a company ah. based abroad uh, or for clients based abroad? Uh, are, are they able to live inside? Yes. How can they do that? I think that uh, during COVID period more than any time before, uh, working from home uh, and remotely using information technology has become extremely popular and effective actually. Uh, so the, uh, the Cypriot government has recognized this and as Cyprus has a lot to offer to any employee, any employee who wishes to work remotely from Cyprus or self-employed person who wishes to work in Cyprus 
and they have announced, as we have heard before, um, the issuing of a digital nomad visa. Uh, to begin with, only 100 of such visas will be issued, um, and the, the applicants, the successful applicants of, and um, holders of such visa can uh, live in Cyprus for one year uh, and then renew it for another two years, uh, provided they, they can prove that they have a secure income from their working for either this for themselves or for the foreign uh, employer mm -hmm. and provide services outside Cyprus. So they can only, they can be in Cyprus, but they cannot actually work or provide any services in Cyprus. Yes. It has to be to an employer abroad or clients abroad. And um, they can bring their family, okay, and their children uh, who cannot work in Cyprus, but they can live together with the holders of such visa. That's, that's very interesting. It is. It's a <laughs> and, positive um, development. Yeah, indeed. We'll have to see how this goes in practice. Um, and uh, uh, one last question. Um, are UK nationals able to purchase properties in Cyprus post-Brexit? And, and if so, uh, uh, how many? Is there any difference uh, with the criteria that uh, existed prior to Brexit? Um, the only difference uh, post-Brexit is that uh, UK nationals can only buy up to two properties and that is the limit for any uh, third country national, okay? Uh, if they do wish to purchase more, it is possible for them to set up a, a Cyprus company and purchase properties in a Cyprus company. And the second difference is that whereas before apply an application to the Council of Ministers uh, was not necessary, now it is, um, it's a simple procedure that any lawyer handling the conveyance would, uh, would deal with. The only downside is that it is taking longer than expected and one of the, I think, something that needs to be addressed and I'm hoping that I can get this message through to the government is that we have uh, a shortfall of staff dealing with Council of Ministers applications because at the moment um, all of a sudden, at least in, in Paphos, the, the British market is probably the, the highest <coughs> market and there is one employee dealing with these applications. Um, currently applications are, are of, of October are still pending and it's taking up to two months to get this approval thus um, holding back the process and um, fulfillment of uh, cases and holding back um, a, a flow of, uh, of income on the island. So I think as um, now this has become a requirement for British National, I think that uh, more staff needs to be dealing with these applications. I would like to thank all of you uh, for again for this for accepting this invitation and for your insightful presentations and discussion on the legal services uh, in Cyprus. Uh, I think although uh, you will all everyone get the chance to meet with our panelists uh, outside, if there is we can accommodate a couple of questions if someone has something specific to ask. Ήρθατε, παρουσιάσατε λοιπόν σε αυτό το συνέδριο στην ουσία τα συγκριτικά πλεονεκτήματα τη Κύπρου για επενδυτέ και επιχειρήσει. Ένα ερώτημα που προκύπτει είναι κατά πόσο σε ένα μεταπανδημικό περιβάλλον θεωρείται ότι η Κύπρος είναι σε θέση και να διατηρήσει αυτό το ρόλο που έχει αποκτήσει ως κόμβος, αλλά κυρίως να τον επεκτείνει. Μα είναι ακριβώς γι' αυτό ακριβώς το λόγο που είμαι εδώ σήμερα, γιατί μετά την περίοδο της πανδημίας έχουμε, προσπαθούμε στην Κύπρο και νομίζω το έχουμε καταφέρει σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό, αυτό δείχνουν τουλάχιστον τα πρώτα αποτελέσματα, ότι προσπαθούμε να κάνουμε την κρίση ευκαιρία. Και μέσα από την κρίση της πανδημίας έχουμε αναπτύξει ένα νέο μηχανισμό ταχείας αδειοδότησης σε διάφορα επίπεδα της χώρας μας, αξιοποιώντας τον μέγιστο δυνατό βαθμό όλες τις υπηρεσίες που έχουμε. Και βεβαίως εδώ είχα την ευκαιρία να παρουσιάσω τα συγκριτικά πλεονεκτήματα που η Κύπρος σήμερα μπορεί να δώσει σε όσους θα ήθελαν να επιλέξουν τη δικιά μας χώρα ως χώρο δραστηριοποίησης. Νομίζω ότι τα, αποτελέσματα, τα πρώτα αποτελέσματα της πρώτης χρονιάς της ταχείας αυτής αδειοδότησης είναι ξεκάθαρα εμφανή και ενθαρρυντικά. Βεβαίως, η δικιά μας προσδοκία της κυβέρνησης είναι, έχουμε θέσει τον πύχη πολύ ψηλότερα από ό,τι μέχρι σήμερα ήμασταν. 
και είμαι αισιόδοξο ότι με το δυναμικό που η Κύπρος διαθέτει, με το δαιμόνιο το οποίο ο Κύπριος αναπτύσσεται επιχειρηματικά και την διέμβρηση των κριτηρίων που έχουμε δώσει και η οποία φαίνεται και από εδώ να αγκαλιάζεται θετικά, θα έχουμε πολύ καλύτερα αποτελέσματα. Ω προ αυτό είμαι καλυμμένο. Θα ήθελα να σα ρωτήσω επίση πολύ γρήγορα και για τι υπόλοιπε επαφέ σα στο Λονδίνο. Είχα χθε την ευκαιρία να έχω μια εκτεταμένη συζήτηση με τις παρικιακούς παράγοντες, κατά την οποία έγινε ανασκόπηση και του εθνικού μας προβλήματος, το οποίο, ας είμαστε ρεαλιστές, βρίσκεται σε μια τελματώδη κατάσταση εξαιτίας της τουρκικής αδιαλαξίας και βεβαίως με τις εξελίξεις που προκύπτουν σε άλλα μείζωνα θέματα που αφορούν τη χώρα μας, όπως είναι το μεταναστευτικό, και τα προβλήματα που αυτό έχει επιφέρει στην πατρίδα μας. Από την άλλη όμως έχω αναπτύξει επίσης τόσο τη νέα στεγαστική πολιτική της κυβέρνησης όσο και την προσφυγική πολιτική η οποία είναι εξαιρετικά στοχευμένες και βεβαίως το μεγάλο όραμα της κυβέρνησης για την αναβίωση της υπαίθρου μας των ορεινών ακριτικών και μειονεκτικών μας περιοχών ε, θέλοντας να στείλω το μήνυμα ιδιαίτερα στους νέους ανθρώπους της παρικίας και του απόδημου ελληνισμού ότι η Κύπρος είναι έτοιμη και έχει ανοίγει απλόχερα τις αγκάλες της για να δεχτεί τους όποιους νέους ανθρώπους θα ήθελαν να επιστρέψουν στην πατρίδα, δίνοντάς τους την ευκαιρία να αποκτήσουν το δικό τους σπίτι σε μια δύσκολη χρονικά στιγμή, προσφέροντας γενναιόδωρα κίνητρα και χορηγίες. Θα έχετε σήμερα επαφέ που μπορούμε να πούμε οι παράγοντες... Όχι, αυτοί. δεν θα έχω επαφέ. Εγώ είμαι καλυμμένος, αυτός είναι το Κύριε Υπουργέ, μια ερώτηση είναι... Ευχαριστώ πολύ, υπάρχει ναι. λόγος που θα έχω παφέ. Μια ερώτηση που έχω είναι, αναφερθήκατε στην προηγούμενη εκδήλωση που έγινε πριν από την πανδημία. Ποια ήταν τα αποτελέσματα, έχουμε αποτελέσματα, έγιναν κάποιες προσπάθειες και έγιναν κάποιες επενδύσεις από την πρώτη εκείνη περίοδο. Ναι, ναι. Ε, ευχαριστώ για το ερώτημα, γιατί βεβαίως ναι πρέπει να μας παρακολουθείτε και να καταγράφετε η όποια δική μας δραστηριότητα. Είναι η γεγονός ότι την, την προηγούμενη φορά που βρέθηκα στο Λονδίνο είχαν καταγραφεί συγκεκριμένα θέματα και ως αιτήματα από τους ανθρώπους της παρικίας που κατά κύριο λόγο αφορούσαν α, την διαδικασία εξυπηρέτηση των α, Κυπρίων που βρίσκονται και είναι βέβαια μόνιμα διαμένονται στη Μεγάλη Βρετσανία. Και όπως ανακοίνωσα χθε, το Υπουργείο Εσωτερικών από την δικιά μας πλευρά έχουμε ήδη δημιουργήσει ένα σημείο επαφής στο Υπουργείο Εσωτερικών το οποίο τέθηκε στην διάθεση της υπάτης αρμοστίας και θα λειτουργεί κάθε Δευτέρα καθ' όλη τη διάρκεια της ημέρας αποκλειστικά για να εξυπηρετεί τους απόδειμους που βρίσκονται εδώ στην Μεγάλη Βρετανία και βεβαίως την ίδια ώρα Έχουμε σε συνεννόηση και με τον συνάδελφο Υπουργό Εξωτερικών ενισχύουμε την υπάτη αρμοστία με τρία πρόσθετα άτομα από την 1η Ιανουαρίου τα οποία σκοπό και στόχο θα έχουν για το επόμενο διάστημα να επεξεργαστούν όλες τις εκκρεμότητες που υπάρχουν όσον αφορά σε θέματα έκδοσης νέων ταυτοτήτων και διαβατηρίων ή και ανανεώσεων για να μπορέσουν οι, α, οι συμπατριώτες μας να αποκτήσουν αυτά τα ταξιδιωτικά έγγραφα στο συντομότερο δυνατό βαθμό, λαμβάνοντας υπόψη ότι είμαστε στην περίοδο την μετά Brexit, η οποία περίοδος έχει... Α, δημιουργήσει ένα αυξημένο ενδιαφέρον μεταξύ των Κυπρίων που α, διαμένουν στη Μεγάλη Βρετανία για την απόκτηση ή ανανέωση των κυπριακών ταξιδιωτικών εγγράφων. Μία άλλη ερώτηση που έχω είναι σχετικά με την ε, περίπτωση των εξελίξεων. Υπάρχουν κάποιες εξελίξεις όσον αφορά τους α, ανθρώπους οι οποίοι ακόμα περιμένουν απαντήσεις για να δικαιωθούν, να πάρουν τα αγιώματά τους όσον αφορά το στεγαστικό. Αναφέρεστε σε Αναφέρομαι στους πρόσφυγες. Ναι. Ε, όσον αφορά την προσφυγική πολιτική, επίσης έγινε μια εκτενή συζήτηση και επεξήγηση ακριβώς του γεγονότος ότι έχουμε τριπλασιάσει ε, τις δαπάνες όσον αφορά τις στεγαστικές μας πολιτικές και ιδιαίτερα στον τομέα των προσφύγων ε, ε, αναγνωρίζοντας ότι διαφορετικές είναι πλέον οι ανάγκες των προσφύγων μας από το 1974 σε σχέση με το σήμερα, έχουμε διαφοροποιήσει 
ακριβώς αυτή την στεγαστική πολιτική και πρόσθετα προχωρούμε με την κατάθεση νομοσχεδίου στη Βουλή με την έναρξη της Νέας Χρονιάς για την διαφοροποίηση των κριτηρίων αξιοποίησης των τουρκοκυπριακών περιοχών που βρίσκονται στις ελεγχόμενες από τη Δημοκρατία περιοχές υπέρ των προσφύγων μας, ώστε να υπάρξει μια πιο ακριβοδίκαιη κατανομή αυτού του περιουσιακού στοιχείου, πάντοτε υπέρ των προσφύγων. Και βεβαίως έχουμε, έχω κάνει μια ενημέρωση αναφορικά με ένα τεράστιο θέμα το οποίο απασχολεί όλους μας και αφορά τις, τις περιουσίες που βρίσκονται στις κατεχόμενες, στην κατεχόμενη γη μας, τον τρόπο με τον οποίο το Υπουργείο Εσωτερικών και η Κυβέρνηση επιχειρούμε να δούμε α, μέσα από συγκεκριμένο τρόπο, με πιο αξιοκρατικό τρόπο θα μπορέσουμε ακριβώς να βοηθήσουμε όσους κατέχουν τέτοιες περιουσίες. Έχω όμως πει ρητά ότι η κυβέρνηση και ο πρόεδρος της Δημοκρατίας θα προχωρήσουμε σε ένα τέτοιο ενδεχόμενο σχέδιο μόνο εάν κρυθεί ότι το σχέδιο αυτό θα είναι α, α, αξιοκρατικό και βεβαίως αξιοπρεπές για τους ανθρώπους μας που κατέχουν περιουσίες στα κατεχόμενα. Υπάρχουν πάρα πολλές δυσκολίες, τις έχω επεξηγήσει με λεπτομέρεια και είναι γι' αυτό το λόγο που δεν βιαζόμαστε σε αυτό το συγκεκριμένο θέμα. Ε, τελικά το θέμα, το πολύ καυτό θέμα το εθνικό, υπάρχει μια μεγάλη στασιμότητα, δεν υπάρχει εξέλιξη. Πώς βλέπετε τα πράγματα κύριε Υπουργέ? Ε, θα ήμουν ουτοπικός εάν έλεγα ότι είμαι αισιόδοξο. Αυτή τη συγκεκριμένη χρονική στιγμή υπάρχει μια συγκυρία α, στην, α, και στην τουρκοκυπριακή κοινότητα αλλά πολύ περισσότερο στην Τουρκία που δεν μας επιτρέπει να αισιοδοξούμε. Υπάρχει ο, ένας Ερτογάν ο οποίος συμπεριφέρεται ως ένας σουλτάνος ο οποίος επιχειρεί με διάφορα δόγματα είτε το δόγμα της γαλάζιας πατρίδας είτε του α, μουσουλμανικού στοιχείου να διευρύνει την επιρροή της Τουρκίας σε όλη τα πλάτη και μήκη της Συφιλίου και αυτό θα πρέπει να προβληματίσει την διεθνή κοινότητα. Από την άλλη υπάρχει μια απορριπτική, αν μου επιτρέπετε να πω, τουρκοκυπριακή ηγεσία σήμερα, η οποία θέτει εκ προημίου απαράδεκτες ε, θέσεις για να προσέλθει σε ένα στοιχειώδη διάλογο. Ε, όμως, ε, η, αυτό το οποίο νομίζω ότι θα πρέπει να κρατήσουμε πλέον ξεκάθαρα είναι ότι ιδιαίτερα μετά την δημοσιοποίηση των πρακτικών των όσων διεμήφθησαν στο Κραντς Μοντανά, φαίνεται ξεκάθαρα ποια ήταν η τοποθέτηση της ελληνοκυπριακής πλευράς και του Πρόεδρου Αναστασιάδη όσον αφορά την λύση διζωνικής δικοινωτικής ομοσπονδίας στο συμφωνημένο πλαίσιο και βεβαίω. Ποια ήταν η ξεκάθαρη επίση αρνητική θέση τη τουρκική πλευρά. Άρα, ο διεθνή παράγον αντί να αναλώνεται σε διάφορε αλχημίε και καθυστερήσει, νομίζω ότι θα πρέπει να στρέψει την προσοχή του στην τουρκική αδιαλαξία, να προσέλθουν και οι Τουρκοί και οι Τουρκοκύπροι στο τραπέζι ανεφόρων για να συνεχίσουμε από εκεί που φτάσαμε. Και θέλω να θυμίσω σε όλου μα ότι φτάσαμε κυριολεκτικά μια ανάσα από το ενδεχόμενο μιας λύσης, μιας λύσης που θα έδινε την ευκαιρία να ζήσουμε επιτέλους σε αυτή την μικρή πατρίδα ε, τουρκοκύπρη και ελληνοκύπρη σε ένα καθεστώς χωρίς ξένες εγγυήσεις, χωρίς μονομερή επεμβατικά δικαιώματα και βεβαίως να μπορέσουμε να φτιάξουμε αυτό που είναι το όνειρο όλων μας και ιδιαίτερα για τα παιδιά μας, μια ευημερούσα πατρίδα μακριά από κατοχές στρατεύματα και εγγύησης. Ευχαριστώ κύριε Υπουργέ. Uh, welcome everybody. My name is Michael Economidis. I'm the managing director of uh, Legal Corporate Real Estate Investment Group. Uh, I'm not here today to sell your services. I'm not here to sell you any particular city. And I'm definitely not here to fill you up with numbers because I'm sure that by the end of the day you'll not remember absolutely anything from, uh, uh, from numbers. So I'm here today actually to talk to you about in reality, in a pragmatic approach, what is happening in Cyprus, what happened in Cyprus uh, during COVID, and what is happening post-COVID, investment-wise and real estate. The market trend that we see uh, and the opportunities that we see at the moment in Cyprus. Um, as, I, as I told you, uh, we, we have seen that the, the, the real estate industry in Cyprus has changed dramatically the last, uh, I would say, two years. We had the abolition of the uh, Cyprus investment scheme, and then we had also the COVID. That was a huge bomb for the Cyprus real estate market. However, that uh, created the ground for the professionals and the country to correct itself and actually focus on substantive investments. And when I say substantive investments, I mean 
without any uh, bubble uh, fluctuation in pricing. And we see that the clients actually now, they, they, they pick point and they carefully choose their property investments. Whereas when we had the passport scheme, everybody was just caring how to complete the two million euros. They didn't care about due diligence. They didn't care about the actual return of the property. They didn't care uh, about the uh, ROI or the capital appreciation or any legal complexities. However, what we have seen during COVID and of course, post-COVID and post the abolition of the Cyprus investment uh, program is that we see a more professional industry of real estate and of course professionals like law firms that we focus now on substance. We see clients, we see investors from all over the world, we see investors from UK, Germany, Sweden, and other countries that were not traditional markets for Cyprus. We see those people coming in Cyprus now choosing the right property actually for either investment or to actually live in Cyprus. So Cyprus at the moment, it's a combination of various elements. It's not just the property itself. It's the education, the schools where their kids will go, it's the restaurants, it's the, it's the hospitals, the national healthcare system, the safety, the privacy that uh, Cyprus offers, and of course, the very friendly culture that Cyprus has to offer, which for me uh, has um, the most enormous uh, value. So what we have seen in Cyprus now, we have seen this new uh, tendency. Um, we have seen that uh, there has been happening, a lot of people have been talking about market pricing crashing. I wouldn't call it a market crisis uh, crashing actually. What I would say is that it's a correction of the prices. Whereas before we will see properties that 10 years ago in realistic market, that would be uh, in, uh, for sale in the market, let's say 4,000 or 5,000 uh, euros per square meter. We have seen properties well above 10,000 euros per square meter. For me, and this is always my personal opinion, and that's why we're here today to express our personal opinions, that was a bit not realistic. So what we have seen now, we have seen a correction. And this is the approach that Cyprus has to follow, advising our clients, advising uh, the investors where to invest to get uh, the maximum benefit of their investment. Uh, we have seen the last few months that uh, uh, the Cyprus banks and actually a lot of other European banks, they have been announcing negative interest at the range of 0.6%. So our advice, is that if somebody does have the available cash, it's just a pure comparison mathematical approach. Either you have your funds in a bank, which you're going to be taking a 0.60% negative, or you invest your money in Cyprus, where you can obtain uh, between 5 and 7% return on investment, and usually capital appreciations up to the range of 10 and 20%. Um, so I see that in Cyprus at the moment we have a very super positive momentum. I really hope that we stick to that momentum with a very realistic and pragmatic approach so we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. There is no shame for everybody always to accept their mistakes because this is how we learn uh, in order to evolve as a country and as professionals. So past is past. Uh, Cyprus for me, it's the ideal place to invest at the moment, and we welcome everybody to talk to us as lawyers and real estate investment advisors uh, during the day to give you more insight about the Cyprus market. Thank you very much, everybody. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paula Hajilandri. I'm the Director of Business Development at Michael Cipriano and Paul C, where one of the largest law firms in Cyprus and we have offices in six countries abroad, opening two new ones now in Tel Aviv and Frankfurt. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you today, and thank you, Mr. Savas Kiriakidis, for managing to bring us all together under this roof. It has been a very interesting conference, and I have to admit that this is the first conference, this is the first business trip I'm having after two years of absence like all of us, like most of us, I believe, uh, because, well, our lives before were kind of every two, three weeks, you know, hopping on a plane, going to China, going to Japan, or something as if, you know, just get on the tube, you know. 
you go down to Westminster. Um, so it's a pleasure to have a physical uh, event and uh, what we've heard today, um, it's great. And allow me to share something with you about Cyprus, because we're all talking about Cyprus today. Relocating, um, investment opportunities, etc. I'll share something that uh, once um, a student of mine said, because I used to teach back in the days. Uh, a student of mine said, while we were representing Cyprus in Strasbourg at the European Parliament, uh, in his opening speech, he said, Cyprus is not just the Calimera, or the Yasu, or Halumi, or uh, good smiles and hospitality from people. Cyprus is much, much more. And we're seeing how Cyprus now is in the center of everything. It's becoming a very, very interesting um, center for business, for education. We see that we're attracting more and more the interest of international universities. And we're attracting more and more young people, young entrepreneurs, to join us. Uh, we're in the crossroads, yes, three continents. So, I mean, although we're small, although we've made lots of mistakes, I'm pretty sure we're still doing something right. But with no further ado, I will join my panel with the lovely ladies and one gentleman. <laughs> so, um, and before we start, because, um, okay, maybe some of you are tired, most of you are hungry, um, I'm going to ask you something. Stand up. Come on. Don't make me ask, don't make me ask twice. Come on, stand up. All right, good. Two feet up. Okay. Now, you know what I can do? I'm not going to let you out. Okay? All right, good. So, <clears throat> sit down. Right. Come on. Stand up and touch your nose. Come on. I'll register you to the gym next time. Okay. So, sit down, stand up, and catch your nose. Oh, come on. Sit down now. All right. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Now I have your attention. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Excellent. So, um, as uh, our panel is the last one, last but not least, um, we have a very interesting topic. Yes. Investing in Cyprus, why should we invest in Cyprus? Why should we ask for more people, more investors, more professionals to join our beautiful island and come and create something? Either innovation, either properties, either universities. So, I will start by um, asking this beautiful panel a few questions. Yes. You've seen so many PowerPoint presentations, so I'm sure you're like fed up with them. Yeah, yeah, yes, Mr. Constant, I see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, let's have a nice heart to heart chat, shall we? So I'll start with Ms. Alexandra Pelagias, very dynamic lady, I'm telling you. So, um, Alexandra, is Cyprus still attractive as a jurisdiction? Um, for the UK nationals post Brexit. I mean, we've heard opinions before, Mrs. Edmund Palas from our company, she elaborated on that, but it's nice to have and you know to have different voices because each one of us targets something different. Alexander. Okay, well, uh, originally we had yeah. the fair mm -hmm. short PowerPoint presentations, but thanks to my dear friend the Minister of Interior, who isn't here now, Mr. Nikos Oris, he said everything I was going to say, and I'm holding a useless piece of paper. <laughs> so, uh, we can only sue you, you know. <laughs> uh, having to go through the tunnel, yeah, of course, is helpful. So, I would just like to point out that, insofar as Cyprus being an attractive jurisdiction is concerned, we are in Britain, and we are talking to British people. So I would say that one thing that is useful for British um, pensioners at least, which is a big part of UK people moving to the island, we, despite the, after the withdrawal agreement, there is a very good uh, benefit where 
the pensioners can carry on being paid abroad, and if they're individuals, they will get a pension and the other benefits that go with the pension in Cyprus. So that would be something that they can consider because. Mm -hmm. No, it is quite interesting actually, and I think that it's uh, the pensioners, and um, we've heard before about you know the um, investments in retirement homes. That is something we lack, you know, because we've seen pensioners coming to Cyprus, um, investing in properties, and then they reach a specific age that they need to come back to the UK because simply we don't have the facilities to take care of these people, such nice organized communities which is something that Australia has been successfully doing. So, by all means, you develop properties, you develop, you know, all these commercial, all these buildings, all these things that they were so interesting and beautiful photos. Why don't we think, you know, one step ahead and invest in that? Because these people that they choose to come and stay in our island, definitely they would like to stay forever. Um, but why do you think Cyprus is a good option to relocate the business. I mean, okay, we've, we've heard everyone say yeah. the benefits and the tax benefits and the access to um, so so many other financial centres of the world and EU passporting for the people who are in the upcoming financial services industry in Cyprus. Um, one thing I would like to point out mm -hmm. is that our authorities, fortunately, follow developments closely. Yeah. And when they see that they need to adapt and change laws and regulations, they're quite quick in doing that. And, mm -hmm. and for that, I must admit, it's a good thing to do. Excellent. And I mean, uh, does Cyprus at the moment uh, offer any good investment opportunities? <coughs> Like to the to the international investors. I mean, yeah, um, we've talked about the investment yeah. industry for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, we've talked about um, all the property investments too. Yeah, startups and tech is something we haven't really sort of discussed. Mm -hmm. I think about. Paula has a question for you about the yeah. startups. I think Paula. I saw we're noting that down. Yeah. We said that today we're going to have a nice a few other things that we mm -hmm. haven't really talked about yeah. much here, and that's investing in schools and universities where they're and, and in um, student halls, which have become very popular the last few years. Mm -hmm. There's a booming now interest in building hospitals also in Cyprus. Yeah. And finally, we haven't talked about energy projects, they're quite popular too. Solar parks are coming up quite a lot. We've got a few wind parks, but solar parks have become very popular. Um, the government has incentives for this, and they are an area that we need to pursue in Cyprus because, well, we're a bit behind in the uh, energy department. Energy, yes. <laughs> so we've got to Yes, I, I totally agree. And uh, in addition to, to what Alexander said, because um, I live in Paphos, and uh, usually we get everybody jokes about Paphos. You know, like you have to go through the tunnel, and you, have, you can get duty free, and then you know you are in Paphos, and well, and, and everybody chooses Paphos actually for their holiday. You know, you go back to Nicosia and on Monday, and then everyone's like, oh, what did you do on the weekend? Oh, I went to Paphos. You know, with you lovely hotels and everything. Yeah, okay. We're the village. Uh, but, uh, it was interesting because last week uh, between the mayor of Paphos, Mr. Ferdinand Fedonos, and uh, between the Technological University in Limassol, the uh, there was uh, the signature of an agreement. There's a new state university of management, entrepreneurship, and tourism being created in Paphos. It will open its doors in 2023. Plus, the American University of Beirut is moving to Paphos as well. So this is also investing in education. We do need halls, we do need halls of residences, of apartments and whatever that title. So um, we think that we will have around 2,500 new students living in, in, in campus for the, for the years to come. Um, Paula, are you ready for your question for example? Oh, uh, there's a microphone there. 
all these things that, that, that. Yes. Uh, okay, I'll sort of separate startups in two, in two areas. The one is IP, where we have a very good IP incentive uh, structure in Cyprus. It comes to an effective tax rate of 2.5%. There's um, a lot of benefits in terms of allowance and, it, and capital expenditure, etc. More details can be given to you later, but effectively the tax is 2.5%. I don't want to go into all these taxes. There's too many tax people around and they might um, correct me in the end. Um, the other area is the tech area. There was a very good type of startup visa scheme which allowed talented entrepreneurs from third countries to end, especially from third countries, because the EU nationals come in very easily, uh, to enter, reside, and work in Cyprus in order to establish a startup. Okay, in any case, thank you very much for inviting me. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay, we listen all day in amazing speakers that they talk uh, about Cyprus. We know and we have many information about taxes, law, uh, properties, uh, places, where to invest. The most of them, they are Cypriots, okay? Me, I am not. So, I am Paola Castaño and I am from Colombia living 20 years in Cyprus. Uh, my pleasure, my, uh, my passion is travel around the world and learning about the culture and the, how the people live in other countries. I feel blessed that my family, my children, are in one amazing place, safe place, and the place that they have many opportunities, like in Cyprus. In, the, in Cyprus, uh, it's a multicultural country that don't, uh, they respect us, our culture, our beliefs, uh, our religions, everything. The people there, I love the people there when they say Calimera, even if they don't know, ya, know us, they don't know you. Uh, in Cyprus, I think that they have many opportunities for investment, but it's very important that if somebody wants to go to Cyprus, or today after this, if you want to go just to have a tourism and to have a good time, amazing time in vacations, if you want to go to relocate in Cyprus, you will have a safe place. If you want to come to Cyprus for uh, retirement, you will find a quality life. If you want to come to Cyprus to invest, you have amazing opportunities. If you want to come to Cyprus just to work, also you will find there something to do. Uh, it's, this is my experience. I am here just to tell you that uh, I invest in Cyprus, in Larnaca, basically. For me, Larnaca in this moment is, sorry. For me, Larnaca in this moment this is the hotspot city that has many opportunities and very good prices. We have in this moment, uh, we are with the largest project in Cyprus, that is the new Larnaca Marina. Uh, new shopping mall, uh, new roads, uh, many, many projects. One minute because I have the, uh, here the, the project. International airport, reasonable prices, uh, redeveloper city, new uh, Mackenzie area. Have a many words. But in any case, you can come to Cyprus. I am not here to say come only to Larnaca, to all the places because. Every city have, an amaze, have something amazing. The capital, Limassol, Paphos, the mountains. We have amazing opportunities in the real estate. Apartments next to the, next to the beach, villas next to the beach, uh, uh, houses next to the mountains. We are very near uh, one city to the other. So you can invest, you can uh, relocate, and you can uh, live there in any, in any of the other cities. No. For me, the most important thing is that the, uh, Cyprus is a member of the European Union, but it's a multicultural country. The four percent of the population are not Cypriots. Uh, the hospitality, the people there are amazing. Greek cuisine, multicultural country, traditional, connection with the board, a strategic center. Your family, we will be safe there. My children, my family, uh, 
are in other environment, very different than the, in other countries that I visit and I live in before. This is about Larnaca and all the projects that we have in Larnaca. And I want just to say that the Cyprus for me is, uh, like we, we say in Spanish, La Isla Bonita. Is the Mediterranean place, the paradise place that everyone wants to live. Me, I want to live there. This is my home, and I love Cyprus. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to the gentleman uh, of our panel, Mr. Nico Lucas. Um, we are going to talk about something very interesting. Everybody has been talking about the Cyprus IP Ops regime. Uh, but first of all, let's get the story straight. What is IP? I'm going to change my name to Paula. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 the in, it's the in name. Hello, everyone. Uh, intellectual property is not one thing. It's a combination of different things which are all uh, united by the fact that they are products of the mind. So inventions are intellectual property protected by patents. Uh, a song, a book, uh, the drawing are forms of intellectual property protected by copyright law. A design is a form of intellectual property protected by design's law. A logo, a script, a smell, a shape, they are all protected by trademark law. They are a different form of intellectual property. A secret, a trade secret, a confidential information is also a form of intellectual property protected by trade secrets law. The reason I'm explaining this is because it's wrong to assume that all intellectual property rights are treated in the same way. So going, for example, to the patent box, which is the, the tax regime in Cyprus that uh, pro provides this effective tax rate of 2.5% for the exportation of IP, it no longer applies to all areas of intellectual property. It did up until 2015. And then in 2015, because of something called BEPS, which you heard about earlier, the patent box regime was restricted to uh, the exploitation of intellectual property used in, in inventions, in research and development. So really, it protects patents, uh, copyrights where computer software is involved, and certain types of industrial designs where they're used in industry. The significance of that was that it took out of tax protection uh, trademarks, most forms of copyright, most forms of designs, and that was a massive, massive blow to Cyprus, which we've done a few things to try to remedy. Excellent. Uh, but what kind of IT sector would be interesting um, to invest in Cyprus? Well, actually, the one thing that no one, I think, has mentioned at all during this conference, which I personally think is the most important uh, attribute of Cyprus, is the education of its people. We're talking about people at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if you've got a nice beach or if it's sunny or whether you've got beautiful flats. You need people. And the people of Cyprus are very well educated, as we all know, and very receptive to uh, an entrepreneurial uh, type of culture. And so IP is ideal for, for Cyprus. They really are a match made in heaven. The music industry and the uh, book publishing industry were very effective in Cyprus until uh, the change in the tax regime. Currently, uh, and I represent many startups in Cyprus and spin-off companies from the universities. There is unbelievable expertise coming out of academic universities in, in Cyprus where research is being commercialized. Some of the IP that's being generated at the University of Cyprus is better than the IP I've seen in England. It's that high quality. What Cyprus lacks is a culture of understanding intellectual property and having the services to uh, provide support for these institutions. But the film industry is the one that I think is going to gather momentum in the next uh, few years, partially because uh, of the, of the uh, attempts by the Cypriot government to make it very attractive for film producers to make films in Cyprus. Currently in Cyprus now, uh, 
I think it's currently 35%, but shortly there will be laws implemented to provide a 40% tax rebate on um, making of bills in Cyprus, so long as there is a benefit to Cyprus. And this will bring a lot of genuine interest from film producers. I, I had a quick look earlier, and Cyprus and Greece have the best effective, uh, best tax rebate in the EU at 40%. The other countries, I think Hungary, Estonia, Greece um, is also 40%, but Hungary, Malta, um, Czech Republic, Spain, they're between 20 and 30%. And I understand that in Cyprus we're looking to increase it to 50%. Now, film producers are going to move to Cyprus, especially as I'm also involved in a project to build the first film studios in Cyprus. So I think this will happen. And I think when it happens, we've got another sector that's really going to take off in Cyprus. So you believe that we do have the incentives to attract these investors with 40% yeah. uh, tax rebate? We definitely have the incentives. Yeah. My worry in Cyprus, which I've said publicly many times, is that I don't know that we yet have the culture or understanding to take advantage of this in Cyprus. Intellectual property in Cyprus is not understood. Mm -hmm. And there is a culture of copying. You know, a, a couple of years ago, just before lockdown, I was giving a talk at uh, UCLan, which is in Vienna. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was uh, talking about counterfeiting. And about 100 meters from where I was speaking, there was a shop selling counterfeit luxury brands. Mm -hmm. And yet I was being told by the government that Cyprus had full respect for intellectual property rights. So I took the, the person, I won't mention who that person was, out in the coffee break and said, well, look at all this. Is, is, is this respecting uh, IP? And I couldn't say anything. But so long as Cyprus could be joined up at government level, which it isn't at the moment, on IP, and so long as the, there's an education process where cultural uh, improvement takes place on understanding IP, I think Cypriots can take advantage of these incentives. We're not there yet, and panels like this really help and, yeah. and make the point. Definitely. Um, and uh, I think Senia has a, a question. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned the film industry. Is it on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you mentioned the film industry. Uh, and it's very interesting. Have you been involved in this at all in, the, in this sector? Yes, yes. I mean, first of all, I have a lot of experience in the film industry in England. Mm -hmm. And for many years, I've been trying to generate interest in, in Cyprus. So when the first film uh, tax laws were, were introduced about five, six years ago, I helped the government, well, I persuaded the government to do it, I think. And they then sat down and wrote the laws with my assistance. Unfortunately, they didn't always take into account some of my suggestions, and uh, I think as a result of that, we ran into some difficulties. I'm now involved, again, with a, a, an English company, the, the, the main directors in the room as we speak, um, which has recently been listed on the site of Stock Exchange. It's called FOS. But I don't think it's FOS because FOS means light in Greek. I think it's FOS because film, I think FOS stands for films on screen. Is that, is that right? But that's Nevin over there, way we get one. Nevin is the managing director of FOS. FOS is, is an English PLC which has just been listed on the Cyprus Stock Exchange. And the idea is that we will build film studios in Cyprus, in Lanka. Okay. And uh, we will be. Um, making our own, we're making three films of our own over the next few months, and we'll also be providing the studios uh, for rental to other companies that wish to make films in Cyprus. Now, I know that films in Cyprus got off to a bad start last year with that uh, karate film that Nicholas Cage was involved in. Yes. I think that's, that there were specific yeah. problems, was it Jiu-Jitsu? I'm going yeah, to mention it a <laughs> But there were specific problems with that, which we are. Uh, Trying my hardest to avoid this time around. It's mainly delays in the payments, from as far as I know, because we, uh, as a law firm, we deal with it, um, and it's something that personally, to uh, my interest, lay my my area area of expertise, let's say. So, um, <laughs> hmm? not karate, <laughs> filming, <laughs> theatre and arts. 
Uh, but we have the same issues with the other movie, the SOS, uh, which we had the Russian investors. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of bureaucracy in delaying, uh, but okay, they were not worried because they had all the funds, so it was kind of, we don't need the government. I, I think you're right. <laughs> I mean, this, this is the reality of the yeah. problem that we can face, and I think it all goes back to, to what I said earlier, which is yeah. understanding the culture, you won't get that in England, yeah. not because the officials are better, but because they've got more experience uh, and history and, in dealing with this kind of And this of is what we need. I mean, okay, I mean, we, we, the benefit is that for Cyprus is that we're on the map now. Even with two three productions, we're learning. Of course, we make mistakes, so we hope that it will be better. But I want to ask you about the time frame of, you know, creating the studios. Well, it's early days. Mm -hmm. I think we are looking at the studios being up and running within 12 to 18 months. But we're hoping for 12. Okay, excellent. The land has been identified. Mm -hmm. um, the idea would be to bring expertise from the UK yeah. to train local uh, uh, local people, but also to do not just the filming in Cyprus, but also the post-production work in Cyprus. And there are some well-known UK film producers who are planning to relocate from the UK to Cyprus. So it's not just a, a, a vision or a dream. People are, are moving their entire businesses and their life to, to build this um, project in Cyprus. So it's, it is exciting. Perhaps if we have this conference in a year's time, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, why not? Excellent. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, last but not least, Xenia, uh, you've already uh, met Xenia as a moderator to the panel before. Xenia uh, is all about funds and money. <laughs> uh, she's the expert you want to go to. So how is the investment funds industry progressing? We had this pandemic that has changed up all our entire lives and <laughs> the whole stage. What is happening, Xenia? Okay, thank you, Paula. <laughs> First, and I uh, would like to, just, uh, to make a general statement about uh, the growth uh, sector of the, of the Cyprus economy, how it, how it diversified during the last years. Um, also, during the, the years of the pandemic, the whole economy has been in recession. It, it is a phenomenal um, um, uh, thing. Uh, the whole economy had to put on hold. Uh, we've seen interest rates uh, fall, we've seen uh, the weakening of the dollar, we've seen the bank, the bank, central banks pump, pumping liquidity into the, the economy so that they, they, they give oxygen. So it's been a very strange year. Also in Cyprus we knew we had uh, a, a tough one. And uh, yeah, so uh, they, they have started, they realized that but this realization has been since the 2013 crisis. Uh, they have been um, investing in alternative investments. And that's it's all about, our panel is about, this alternative growth sectors of the economy. And uh, the Cyprus, so we've seen the minister today, he supports the, the government, is truly supporting other sectors of the economy. We want to bring real business in Cyprus. And uh, they, they now, they also, they, they've been announcing new schemes all the time. The fast track, now new schemes about the IT, which is a very big uh, thing that we, are, we want to attract IT professionals to Cyprus. And on the same page is the funds, which is also one of my favorite uh, topics, which I follow very closely. I'm also in the uh, committees of the associations of CIPA and CIPA and, uh, and uh, CELP. To, to enhance further the, the, the sector. And uh, the government is truly believes in, in this, and uh, the association of CIFA is with um, awareness road shows across different countries uh, for people to know about uh, Cyprus and the competitive advantages. And coming to your question, yes, it has been um, a, a growing sector. We've seen a tremendous growth in the last uh, years. Actually, since 2016 um, uh, to today, it's like 200% increase. We've seen the assets under management uh, now rising to 8.5 uh, billion. And uh, also 25 of it is invested in, in the real Cyprus economy. So apart from the, from the other sectors, because it brings business in the economy and yeah. the new jobs, 
we, um, funds are invested in cyber trauma. That's excellent. I mean, uh, you're very active because I I like to watch you when you do webinars or you know I've seen you in some conferences we had now in Cyprus and it's it's very interesting. It's nice to see um, believe in uh, in growing and in, in, in this uh, diversification of yeah. the Cyprus economy. Exactly. Because the Cyprus economy is not only about real estate or tourists. Exactly. We have other sectors and we it's time to strengthen those. And it's, it's, not, it's time to prepare for the future. Exactly. It's time, I mean, we see the NFTs now, we see the cryptos, the blockchain. We need to start preparing ourselves. It's things that we probably won't understand, but our children will be working with it, but we need to prepare the ground for them. But actually, I want to add that. Mm -hmm. During uh, this recession, um, Cyprus, the, the recession rate in Cyprus has been one of the lowest in the Europe. Okay. At least with the, uh, in the ones we have tourists as well. Okay. Also, we have an upgrade with the, one of the credit rate, uh, ratings, uh, the movies. So, yes. that is a good message that Cyprus yeah. has really uh, diversified and exactly. Cyprus as well. But pausing for a minute, because it's nice, I like the way the, the discussion is flowing. Uh, I would like to make a very basic question What is a fund and what are the types of funds? Just to, because okay, not everybody in this room uh, completely understands how, what it is and how it works. Yeah, and it's not also for, for everyone. I yes, mean, it's good to, to know for, for who it, it is for. Okay, the fund actually, it's a way of collecting uh, money from a different number of investors uh, and, uh, and they have a strategy that according to define investment strategy. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, in a nutshell, what the fund is about. Okay. And so they collect money, but they are regulated, they have transparent procedures, and they follow a certain investment strategy. The fund is for asset managers that want to set up in, uh, in, uh, in, in the jurisdiction and manage their funds. It's for, it's for invest, uh, investment managers as well. It's for entrepreneurs as well that want to raise money. Yeah. And uh, also another sector, uh, which is of interest to Cyprus, and I think it's a sector that could attract is the tax. The family offices that they can go under a fund manager and they can actually, um, you know, address any concerns they may have. Like uh, um, because it's a it's a transparent procedure, it follows rules, it has reporting to the investors, so they know at all, all times uh, about their positions. They get reports, so it's another way uh, also for the family offices to look into and they have already looked into the the fund structure. Regarding the types and also to the yeah. questions, we have two main types, uh, the UCIT and the AIS. The UCIT is more specialized in investing in financial, they have more restrictions, so they have to invest in financial instruments or certain specific sectors. It's, it's for retail. They are, uh, I would say, less risky uh, but less return. On the other hand, we have the alternative. Cyprus is more about the internal funds uh, in Cyprus, and we have three other uh, sub uh, uh, categories of yeah. internal investment funds. They are uh, self-managed, uh, the external managed, and the uh, limited number of persons. Wow! Yeah! Wow! It's, it's amazing. But Alexandra, I think, yeah, who are the fund users? She's yeah. doing a KYC now. <laughs> yeah, what, what I mentioned before, the fund users are could be uh, the ma fund managers who uh, bring funds to um, uh, manage and market their funds in Europe, and uh, or it could be family offices and institutional investors and all of that. Yeah. Great. And what is the time frame of opening a fund? Okay, um, if it's managed uh, under the, an external fund manager, uh, there is this recent amendment in the legislation, they've done the registered funds, mm -hmm. which yeah, takes about only a month, because okay. it goes under the, the fund manager, manager and this registration. So it's a very quick process. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if it's an alternative, a regulated fund um, uh, uh, authorized directly by SciSec, it takes four to, two to five months. Yes, it makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And what is the value uh, offering of site of, of our country to these investors and to investment funds professionals? Like, why would they choose us? 
exactly. So, um, first of all, um, it, it's a regulated jurisdiction and, uh, and, 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 and an EU jurisdiction. So, having a fund manager in uh, um, uh, this the fund yep. gives, gives you also the custody rights. So, a lot of people look into Cyprus for the, for the funds to be managed by fund manager and to be freely marketed across mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, the, the regime it has a, the regime is very um, you know modern and flexible and uh, the regulator also is open and it's adapting to new changes to the legislation so the um, it, 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 it's current so it, it can uh, you know it, it updates its, itself mm -hmm. all, all the time and uh, one of the biggest advantages advantages to compared to other jurisdictions like Luxembourg for example which are one of the traditional ones is it, it has the lowest uh, lowest costs to set up so, uh, so we have the lo lowest costs we have um, uh, the framework the legislative framework that offers offers protection because we have the European law transposed uh, into Cyprus and um, like low setup costs, uh, the professional in Cyprus are of high quality. Yeah. So like, I can see there are so many advantages, and that's why um, we look to be uh, an EU hub mm -hmm. because it is across the continents, uh, three continents. Yeah. It's, it has free access to markets. So um, it's, it's quite interesting, interesting. and yeah, yeah, looking towards the future, uh, I can see that we have, we will have positive changes for once. Not because usually changes are taken, you know, they take time or people take them negatively. Some are not ready, but I think that what is happening now is generally in all aspects and levels pushing Cyprus towards the future and we cannot stay behind. We need exactly. to be able to catch up and, and move ahead. Um, closing this uh, this panel, um, asking uh, for any questions coming from the audience, I would like uh, also to have a final remark from each one of you uh, and then we can all proceed to enjoy our lovely lunch and network and, you know, catch up. Uh, Alexandra, I will uh, start with you. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. I would just like to add on the investment opportunities in Cyprus, what we haven't mentioned again, is shipping. Shipping is a very big area of Cyprus, and not only for ship owning companies, but also for ship managers and ship charters. The tonnage tax system is a very good system giving them a lot of benefits. So coupled with all the benefits that you've heard about 50 times today about Cyprus being the best place to live, and having the tonnage tax system has um, benefits for these, uh, this area, this industry. And that's why a lot of these companies that have already established themselves in Cyprus, Interorient, Colombia, ships, etc. Most of them haven't left the island for the last 30 years, so I think that's an area that's interesting to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I mean, we've said so many messages here today. Uh, I think Cyprus um, has a stable environment in all aspects, tax as well, like you mentioned before, because it's also a very uh, big sector also uh, to have a business there so there are so many things that someone has to look into a businessman and, and, and set up the business itself so and the, and the, and the government is there they want to attract uh, yes. uh, businesses and we've seen in, in all aspects and new incentives to be there so thank you we are looking for the future great Paula? Just to say it again that the Cyprus is the big young place and the amazing place to relocate, to invest, to live, quality life and to retire from there. This coming from Lady from Colombia. She's called Paula. Nick. We we need to invest in people. Yeah. You invest in whatever you like, but without people, none of this will happen. But as far as my own view is concerned, we need to uh, cultivate a culture of 
uh, innovation and creativity uh, in Cyprus, bringing together scientists, entrepreneurs, creators, and designers, because by doing that, it would enable us to um, monetize uh, academic and commercial research, and also monetize creative processes. Creative people are usually pretty bad businessmen, in my experience. Uh, and what we need to do is to find a way for them to make money from their creativity. I can promise you, the creative sectors in Cyprus are very, very good. But if they are not joined up, they are not recognized. Uh, families would rather their child became an accountant, or a lawyer, or a doctor, rather than an actor, or a film producer, or a cartoon maker or a designer. We have to get over this culture. And once we get over this issue, and once we foster this culture of creativity, which I hope the Film Studios will help with, it will spur the economic growth and prosperity on the island, which is within our grasp, and it's within our hands. And we can do it, but we need to understand that we need to invest in people to do that. Because without that, nothing will happen. I totally agree. I totally agree. Good. We should invest in people and in the people of Cyprus and the people who arrive from abroad and they live in Cyprus. So ladies and gentlemen, with these remarks, we're officially closing the conference. Enjoy your night.